To perform the analysis of an axial compressor, we need to look at a complete set of a single stage in an axial compressor that consists of a rotor and a stator. In this case, all of the angles, alpha and beta, between the inlet and the outlets are referred to or according to the axial velocity or CA. Now let's assume that there's air coming in from the previous stage into the rotor. The air came at the velocity of C1 or absolute velocity C1 and the rotor itself has a tangential velocity of U. With these two informations we can get the relative velocity w1 here at the angle of beta1 so beta1 belongs to the relative velocity according to the axial velocity ca and then the air moves through the rotor blades and then it enters the stator at velocity of c2 or absolute velocity c2 after leaving the rotor blade and entering the stator. And here we have the identical value of tangential velocity U and axial velocity CA. And we can form the analysis to get the relative velocity W2 here at the outlet of the rotor with the relative flow angle of B of beta 2 and absolute low angle of alpha 2. Keep in mind that the velocity triangle at the outlet of the rotor is identical to that the inlet of the stator. And then the air moves through the non-moving blades of stator and it leaves the stator at CA or absolute velocity and axial velocity and it absolute velocity of C3 with the absolute low angle of alpha 3. To conclude the velocity triangle, we need to remember that the value of C1 is equal to C3 and then alpha 1 will be equal to that of alpha 3 at the stator blade. On the other hand, the relative velocity at the rotor outlet or W2 is less or a little bit higher than the relative velocity at the inlet of the rotor. The difference in the value of relative velocity is mainly due to the pressure rise across the rotor blade. So that it indicates that the, there is a pressure rise or pressure increase as the fluid moves through the rotor blades. To further analyze the axial compressors, we need to also use the Euler equations to get the energy per unit mass flow rate through the Euler equations that we have been used since the pump and turbines chapter. We know very well that the equations is a function of work divided by mass flow rate or sometimes they write it as m dot, is a function of the tangential velocity or blade tip speed of u at the outlet multiple, multiply with cx2 and minus to the absolute velocity minus to the tangential velocity, sorry, multiply with cx1. This is the conditions at the inlet and uh, the outlet. Or we can write this as Euler hat equal to U2 multiplied with CX2 minus U1 multiplied with CX1 divided by the acceler gravity accelerations. As we can see from the velocity triangle that CA is constant and U are identical throughout the rotor and stator so we can write it 
as u equal to u1 and u2. So they are constant between inlet and the outlet of the rotor. So we can rearrange the equations to get CX2 and CX1. We can write it down as U minus CA multiply with tangent of beta 2 and it's also applied to the inlet of the rotor. We can write it as U minus CA multiply with tangent of beta 1. So we can multiply this as CX2 minus CX1 equal to CA multiply with tangent of beta 1 minus tangent of beta 2. So we can write down the Euler or energy per mass flow rate equations in terms of the relative flow angle. So E will be equal to U multiple with axial velocity multiple with the difference between tangent of beta 1 minus tangent beta 2 divided by gravity. Or we can also write it down as a function of the absolute flow angle of alpha and the equations becomes Euler equals to U tangential velocity CA absolute velocity uh, axial velocity multiply with tangent of alpha 2 minus to the tangent of alpha 1 divided by gravity accelerations. From the thermodynamic point of view, we can have a look at the Moya charts of enthalpy entropy diagram here on the left side. And we can get the work per mass flow rate and write it as a function of total enthalpy at the outlet of at the outlet of the rotor minus to the enthalpy at the inlet of the rotor but this has a unit of watt per kilogram per seconds we also can write down that the total enthalpy at any point or ho or h0 is equal to the enthalpy, static enthalpy, plus absolute velocity to the power of 2 divided by 2. And we can expand the absolute velocity C here as the equations becomes static enthalpy plus CA or axial velocity to the power of 2 plus Cx to the power of 2 divided by 2 so that the difference between total enthalpy at the outlet and the inlet or HO2 minus HO1 can be written as H2 minus H1 the static enthalpy difference plus Cx2 to the power of 2 minus Cx1 to the power of 2 divided by 2. And this is equal to the tangential velocity of U multiply with Cx2 minus Cx1. From these equations, we can rearrange it and get it as a function of static enthalpy H2 plus relative velocity at the outlet to the power of 2 divided by 2 equal to H1 plus W1 to the power of 2 divided by 2. These two sets of equations on the left and on the right side is a function of HO2 or relative total enthalpy at the outlet and this is the relative total enthalpy 
at the inlet as a function of relative velocity. To distinguish between these two equations, the second line and the third line is based on the information that we have on each problem that being given. So if we are being asked to get the total enthalpy rise or increase of the total enthalpy based on the relative velocity, we can use these equations. But if we only have, for example, the informations of tangential velocity and these CX2 and CX1, we can use the second equations. The isentropic efficiencies of an axial compressor of a single stage of axial compressors, we can write it down as a function and the ratio of the ideal isentropic work input to the actual work input. Or from the Moyen diagram, we can write them as total enthalpy at point 0.3 SS. Here, minus to the total enthalpy at the inlet of the rotor to the HO3 or total enthalpy at the outlet of the stator minus to the total enthalpy at the inlet of the rotor. So the difference between the ideal isentropic work is between this point and this point. So that's the where we get the adiabatic or isentropic efficiencies of the axial turbines. Or if not writing it as a function of total enthalpy, we can also write down the equations of isentropic efficiencies as a function of temperature which becomes temperature at the inlet of the rotor multiply with the ratio between the enthalpy at point 3 SS divided with temperature at the inlet minus 1 And we can divide this with the temperature difference between the outlet of the stator and the inlet of the rotor. Or we can also, from this point, get the pressure ratio between the rotor and the stator, uh, rotor inlet and stator outlet as a function of PO3 divided by PO1 equal to 1 plus isentropic efficiencies multiply with temperature at the outlet of the stator minus to the temperature at the inlet of the rotor divided by temperature at the inlet of the rotor and all of this is the power of gamma per gamma minus 1. So gamma is the functions of Cp and Cv. The specific heat according to pressure and volume.